And now the refraction matrix. So the general way to think about refraction is we have an optical axis and we're going to allow for a curved surface that has some radius. Um, if we were to finish the circle, the center would be about there, has some radius r. And we have index out here of n and we have index out in here of n prime. So this might be air, this might be glass. And we just have a ray that's going to refract, as you can imagine, it comes up like that, it'll fall to the normal, well, it'll fall towards the normal some amount. So that's the physical process we want to describe. So if we did a bunch of geometry, we could solve for the refraction matrix. I'm just going to give it to us. Um, it is 1, 0, n over n prime, and then n minus n prime over r n prime. Those are your four elements for a refraction at a curved interface going from n to n prime. Let's do a quick um, use of it and just see one little thing we'll learn. Um, 1, 0, n minus n prime over r, n prime, n over n prime. Just for practice, let's apply that to y and alpha and see what do we get. We get 1 times y plus 0 times alpha is y. And then here for the angle, this is where we get a sort of a big mess. We get um, uh, y times n minus n prime over r n prime uh, plus alpha over n times n over n prime. Alpha n over n prime. So to make it pretty, we'd write it like that. So that is just a two element, that's a vector, not a matrix. So all I really wanted to point out is, you say, oh, this can't be right, the y stays the same. Well, the y does stay the same. So keep in mind, all we're actually describing is this event right here. We're describing the change in angle. If we wanted to get to the lens and then refract, we'd have to do a translation. But we didn't do a translation. All we did was that little turn. Therefore, the height stayed the same and the angle changed. Now we'll put a bunch of them together and see what we can make.